My name is Robert Mitchell, and I am a deacon in Ecclesia Epignostica Church. The host consumed here today has been consecrated by my bishop for this purpose. This is the body of Christ, and must be shown the sacred reverence due the Son of God. If you are a sacramental Christian, please observe the guidance of your bishop as to whether or not, and in what manner, you may participate in Holy Communion today. Other baptized Christians should observe the guidance of their pastor. Persons not baptized in the Christian faith should not partake of Holy Communion. Let us begin. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to St. Barachiel Chapel in Richmond, Virginia, as we celebrate Holy Communion for the third Sunday of Lent. Please see the description of this video for a link to the program for today's service. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. Brothers and sisters, let us now confess our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, to Blessed Michael the Archangel, to Blessed John the Baptist, to the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, to all the saints and to you, brethren, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I, I beseech Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, Blessed Michael the Archangel, Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, all the saints and you, brethren, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, be merciful unto us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
Thou, O Lord, being turned toward us, wilt enliven us. Show us, O Lord, thy mercy. O Lord, hear my prayer. The Lord be with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. <coughs> Excuse me. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet. For the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, But when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me what is his name, what am I to tell them? God replied, I am who I am. Then he added, This is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus I am to be remembered through all generations. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all oh my being, bless his holy name. Bless the 
Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing in his kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all, were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, all drank the same spiritual drink, for they all drank from a spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffered death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example and they have been written down as a warning to us upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Repent, says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal from thine altar. And vouchsafe through thy gracious mercy so to purify me that I may worthily attend to thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be on in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and in a becoming manner attend to his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, 
they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There was once a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. Friends, my great-grandmother Evelyn Cook was a very Christian woman who read her Bible daily, lived each day as it came, and never lost her childlike faith or sense of wonder. But she wasn't very educated. She was prone to misspelling and mispronouncing words, and so when she wanted to convey the idea that someone was stuck on a small detail but missing the larger picture, she would say they were heaving at gnats and swallowing camels. She had misread, of course, the word strain in Matthew 23-24 is meaning choke or heave instead of as sifting or sieving. But her homespun phrase still makes sense, and I use it myself to this day warts and all, heaving at gnats and swallowing camels. Thanks, Nanny, I appreciate it. Heaving at gnats and swallowing camels sums up exactly what's going on in and around today's gospel reading. The people of Jesus' time asked him to comment on the Galilean massacre, the people that Pilate executed during their sacrifices. And on the 18 people who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell over upon them. The presumption of the people was that these victims of tragedy must have been very sinful indeed to have been stricken down during sacred rites or inside the Holy City. But Jesus says, no, bad things happen to good people. These victims are no more or no less sinful than anyone else. He tells them to take instead another lesson from these events, which is that time is short. Repent and start bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit now, before it's too late, lest they perish in the final judgment. The people standing before Jesus, you see, are choking on the gnat of random misfortune, the things they can't control, and swallowing the camels of their own sins, which are completely within their power to change. And too often, despite being separated from those folks by 2,000 years of history, people of today focus on the repentance and the judgment part and walk right by the larger lesson. 
That larger lesson is the so-called problem of evil. You hear it expressed in many ways, but usually it goes something like, in a universe created by a good God, why is there evil? Or, why do bad things happen to good people? Entire books have been written on this topic, such as Alvin Planting as God, Freedom, and Evil, and Jung's answer to Job. Many people get stuck on this problem and lose their faith, or can't come to faith because of it. I know because I assisted a young man named Brandon in returning to his faith, in part by helping him answer this question. Brothers and sisters, God wants us to love, trust, and obey him voluntarily. Therefore, he gave us free will. Wicked and misguided people, the Pontius Pilots of the world, have the freedom to commit acts of evil on both the evil and the good. Wind, rain, deterioration, and decay affect all material things, both animate and inanimate both evil and good. Storms, fires, earthquakes, and building collapses like the falling tower of Siloam can claim the lives of anyone at any time. So you see, what philosophers have taken books to debate, Jesus has fully answered in a mere paragraph. Don't blame God for human frailty or the physical realities of meteorology and physics. Folly and superstition of this kind could cost you your faith. Focus instead on what you can control, cultivating the fruits of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5, St. Paul lists these fruits as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But rest assured that these are the tip of the iceberg. Time is short, brothers and sisters. Let us repent and believe in the gospel. And now, to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, three persons in one God, be ascribed as is most justly due, all honor, might, majesty, power, and dominion, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now recite together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. At the Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament of the altar has left us a living memorial of thy passion, grant us so to venerate the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that we may ever feel within ourselves the fruit of thy redemption, who livest and reignest with the Father in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God forever and ever. Amen. May this mixture and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be to us who receive it effectual to eternal life. Amen. Jesus Christ, keep thee unto life eternal. Ye that desire to partake of the body of the Lord, draw nigh and receive this most holy sacrament. Those communicating at home may now partake of Holy Communion. The body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ keep thee unto life eternal.
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank Thee for having fed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Having assured us of Thy favor and goodness toward us, that we might be members of Thy mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. We most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Let us take a moment in silence to center ourselves, offer our prayers, and commune privately in the holy place that is within. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, let us offer now our additional prayers of healing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for baby Owen, just four months old and awaiting on a kidney transplant. We pray for him. We pray for his mother, Sarah, and his father, Michael. We pray for Topper Phelps, suffering from pancreatic cancer. We pray for Ray Coffey, decorated war veteran, struggling in the wake of his heart bypass. We pray for Mary Megan Santiago, suffering from smoke inhalation, and for her poor baby who perished in the fire. We pray for our brother, Eddie Busey, and for our sister, Diane Marlowe, struggling with cancer. We pray for our brother, Rusty Callison, our sister, Peggy, and for the family of Tim and Melissa Jones, suffering with their health issues. Grant them patience under their affliction, and if it be your will, restore them to health. We pray for our past brothers and sisters, Hisham Eshalfi and Reza Green, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Deliver them, we pray, from the death that lasts forever. We pray for our bishops, presiding Bishop Katia and for her daughter, and for Bishops Angela, Linda, Timothy, Ben, and Eric. Please protect and guide them in their missions to the nations of the world and send them in your holy name. We pray for our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine. Soften the hearts of the aggressors, O Lord, and strengthen the hearts of the oppressed and deliver peace. We pray for our sister Tabby in her job search. And also we offer our thanks and our blessings to Leo, James, and Hunter, whose continuing donations make the upkeep and the mission of the St. Rachiel Chapel possible. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. May the Queen of Heaven intercede for us with the Lord our God. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, we humbly beseech thee to behold, visit, and relieve thy sick servants for whom our prayers are desired. Amen. Look upon them with the eyes of mercy, comfort them with a sense of thy goodness, preserve them from the temptations of the enemy, and give them patience under their affliction. Amen. In thy good time, restore them to health and enable them to lead the residue of their lives in thy fear into thy glory, and grant that finally they may dwell with thee in life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, look on your servants, drawing near death of the flesh, lying in great weakness, and comfort them with the promise of life everlasting, given in the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants for whom our prayers are offered, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, bread of life, by the power of this Holy Communion and its promise of life everlasting, deliver those for whom we pray from the death that lasts forever. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Into your hands, O Lord Christ, we commend our brothers and sisters. Amen. St. Barachiel, the Archangel, supreme leader of all the guardian angels, thank you for your guardianship, guidance, care, visitation, and defense. Please stand by us, protect us, inspire, and direct us this day. Come to our aid, showing us left from right in this world filled with confusion and demonic influences. Present to God the Father all our petitions, through Jesus Christ our Lord, together with the Holy Ghost, forever and ever. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. We who have been refreshed with thy heavenly gifts do pray thee, O Lord, that thy grace may be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that it may continually be made manifest in our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. The sign of peace. Brothers and sisters, Thank you for visiting us today. Please be sure to like, to share, and subscribe to this video. We hope to see you again next Sunday. Take care and God bless.